Hi everyone. Thank you for joining me here today. Some of you are live and some of you will be watching me later. So for those of you who are new, I'm Kathleen and I'm an artist and teacher. My studio is called Chroma and it is here in the beautiful um, area of Northwest Florida. Um, but today I'm still at home um, just because it, it feels right here. We have been uh, sharing live classes now for five weeks during quarantine and it's just my way of sharing love with you and to the world right now. Um, so it's my intention to keep hopping on here once a month and um, doing these free classes. And in addition to that, I've also set up a Facebook group that is just for us so we can uh, post our paintings that we do in a friendly group of artists and support each other in our artistic journey. And it's called Chroma Community on Facebook. And I, if you are on Facebook, maybe you can search it and uh, request to join. But if you cannot, if that's not working for you, just send me an email and I will send you a link. And then that way you can, you can be in the group and it's a great way for you to um, send me your painting because I'm hopping on there a few times a day and posting and, and uh, replying, trying to reply to everyone's comments. So um, that is a wonderful resource for all of us. Um, we are joined virtually here today once again by Justin Broderick, who is in the comments with you now. He is still in Nashville. And he can't stay with us the whole time, but I'm lucky to have him for a little while now. Um, he is taking a little time off the farm to help me out. Are you there, Just? I'm here. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, of course, of course. Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> uh, so, it is peony season, and today we are painting a peony. And, um, I've had all month to prepare for this, right? So I've done a few different peonies and um, I wanted to find the perfect one to teach for you all because, you know, peonies are beautiful and everyone loves them, and, but I had to find one that was gonna be the best to teach live. And so um, I'll show you some of, some of, uh, uh, I, one that I did a couple weeks ago, right? So this one, um, and I have black and white of it too, was a was a contender, right? And I painted it, and it's pretty, right? It's okay, um, but in analyzing it, it's not as good as the one we're going to paint today. And let me show you. Here's the one we're painting today, and then here's one that I did a couple weeks ago. So you see the big difference in the visual impact of this one versus this one. And why is that? And there is a really good reason why that is, because if you look at the black and white, um, we see that there is good um, values, right? There, there's, there's light values and there's darker values. Uh, there's great interesting shapes, but there's not a real great delineation of um, the darker value and the middle value. There's not a real dark punch to put in there. Um, and the value shapes aren't as well defined as the one we're going to paint today. So let's look at that one. This is the one we're painting today. Now, this is an awesome, I, I love painting with lots of great light and values in, a, in a, a reference or from a reference. And it's extra important to use something like this for me to teach you because I can very easily show you what I'm thinking and um, the process that I'm going through and why it's important. Um, Remember we talked about the values in the other one. Well, look at the values in this one. Look at this really great dark dark right there in that middle. That's our darkest dark. It's gonna really give our, our painting some, some 
great depth. Um, then we have middle values all around it. And then we have the light values that are catching the light on the edges of the petals. And in addition, look at those great shapes of those light values. That's going to make it so easy for us to, um, to get those in there and, and to, to work around them because they're, they've got great, great shapes. So um, let's get started. I will take... Now, if you printed this out, you'll notice that it is like eight and a half by 11 and our canvas is square. So what I did was I just kind of folded mine in a little bit to make it more of a square because you know I like to paint from the same size reference photo that I have. I think that makes it a whole lot easier for you. So I'm gonna now um, fold it in half and fold it in half again. And I do this so that I can <clears throat> get the middle of my painting and I can start to paint on my canvas from that middle. So I'm gonna um, hang it up here, right next to my canvas, and I'll go through supplies with you quickly and then we'll get started. Um, I use, uh, I, I use primarily the same palette of colors that we use at my studio when we do an in-person class in Chroma. So if you've been there, you, you, you're familiar with the colors. Um, two, two, pretty much two blues, two yellows, and two reds. Um, I use a ultramarine blue and a manganese blue. Um, I use, and these are golden uh, fluid acrylics, by the way. Some of you have written and said, what about you know, heavy, heavy body paint? And, and heavy body paint's great too. Um, uh, golden is, a, is you know, the brand that I use that I recommend. Um, it's super pigmented and, and just luscious. But I also use a, a Hansa yellow and a Indian yellow. And we have a, a nice warm and a cool color here. And then I also use a quinacrino magenta and a naphthol red. And a few weeks ago, I had posted something. Um, I was playing with colors a lot because I'm, I'm working on my online class and there's a whole chapter on color. So I was making color wheels and, and, and um, I had you, know, you all in mind because I wanted to um, I get asked often about supplies for beginners. And so I found um, what I thought was a really perfect starter set. Um, it, it's a golden fluid acrylic starter set. And um, I think, Justin, did I send you that? Uh, you sent the gold thing, yes. Oh, good. So, so Justin can put it on the comments now. Um, and they're very teeny, they're little bottles, but they'll start you off and then you could order more of the ones that, that, you, that you need as you, as you need them. Um, and they have slightly different colors than the ones that I've just gone over. They, um, instead of a manganese, there is a phthalo blue green. And, and I think that um, it's very, very similar. The, the manganese I think, is a little more opaque. It just has a little white in it. So this is a real good, um, a real good compliment to that manganese. Um, the other difference is the yellow, and um, I'm using a Hansa yellow or Hansa yellow, and then the one that's in your kit is a, a Benzamida <clears throat> Lazone yellow, and it's very similar to Hansa yellow. You certainly don't need to, to get it. I, I, I squirted a couple out here on the palette for you to see, um, and it's not much different. So um, there's a whole other reason why that I, I like this particular um, set, and <clears throat> it has to do with uh, color mixing. And, and this, this set will give you a very bright, very chromatic um, mix of colors to, to use. Um, versus um, versus other sets. So I go into all that, you know, a little bit more in depth in my class, um, but <clears throat> that's the reason why that I chose that one. Um, if you have any questions, please 
put them in there and I'll get back to you or Justin can ask me as well. One other, <clears throat> one other color comment um, is that I also was um, experimenting with the Golden Open, um, which stays wet longer. Um, and I found that that is kind of fun to, to play with. Um, but I didn't like to use it for the whole painting. I really like <clears throat> to have those layers kind of that dry. And I found that this was something that I really liked a little bit more for the last layer to have it, to give it a little more blendability, a little bit more softness. But those early layers, if I used the open rather than the regular acrylic, it didn't dry. So when I wanted to go back and put that second layer on, it was um, it was all mixing together. So I don't want that right now with, with, with these particular paintings. I, I like the progression of the layers that we're doing. So that's a, a, a comment about the open products. And I'm gonna turn everything around and uh, show you the canvas. Justin, how do I get rid of the comments? What's that? How do I get rid of the comments? Uh, you swipe them either to the left or to the right. Oh, there they go. <clears throat> there they go. Yeah. Um, I, I I love to see comments and but I can't see my um I can't see what you're seeing if I if I'm also looking at the comments. So I need to get rid of them while we're filming here. And I'm gonna, there we go, trying to, trying to zoom in on the canvas a little bit. It's a little difficult with the gloves on, doesn't like that. <laughs> there we go. Is that good? Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Maybe a little less, huh? So you can see the, see the, uh, there. Okay. So. I'm going to take my, my palette. I'm using some styrofoam plates so it's easy to show you what I'm doing. And I'm gonna put a little bit of um, Indian yellow on there, just a little smidge, and some of my red. Just a little, little bit, because I am gonna start with um, a smaller brush and a lot of water in this mixture. I'm gonna, I wanna kinda dump some water on there with my brush and then mix in that lovely yellow and red and make a pretty orange to draw with. I just like I just like using orangey kind of colors to draw with. It really brightens up the palette, um, and if I'm lucky, peeks through at the end in some spots. So, see how watery that is. It's it's like a watercolor. This layer is well. First, we're going to draw, but then even the first layer is is still watery like a watercolor. All right. So up here, let's put in. Our center and I'm going to even kind of give myself some guidelines here breaking it into four quadrants then I'm going to find my center of my canvas let's see that's pretty good it should be a little lower and then really super light. Don't go heavy here because you don't want to fight to cover it up. But you want a little guideline in here too. Even run your finger over it and blend it out a little. Okay. So now we match. We have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This helps us immensely in drawing in our, our reference. And I usually start in the middle of the painting. So... Right here, um, 
I'm looking at shapes, right? I'm looking at this dark shape. And you know what? It's like a, um, it's like a square. It's like a, but, but, but turned on its side a little bit. And I see that it's mostly in this first quadrant. And it, it's a little bit down here, a little bit here, and a little bit here. I could even color it in slightly because I know it's going to be darker and I'm using a really transparent color which won't um, give me trouble later when I when I want to paint over it with a you know with a darker color. Now I'm looking up into this quadrant and I'm looking at shapes and I see this shape right here sticking up first and it's kind of like um, a little triangle, right? I could even go down here, but I'm gonna to stick to that first quadrant for you so we kind of go a little logically around there. Uh, so that that's a triangle, right? Now we have this little shape, right? And then that kind of goes up like that. And now I'm not going to try to get in every little shape here, but but you know I'm gonna try to really see what's going on at this point. And there's a big. This is a big shape. Look at this. This is all one big old shape of value. So I'm just going to draw that right in. Look at that. There we go. We got that. And then above it, we've got. These, these petals are kind of flipping in, right? So we, we want to give that illusion of, of that flip. But one thing to remember that I noticed when I was painting is that one of these edges is pretty straight. All these, see these? They're pretty straight. And then the other one is kind of curvy and irregular shaped. So that will help you when you're drawing it in because, all right, I'm going over here to this shape and this is gonna have a, a straight back and then flip over into, I mean, you could even, we're, we're just being general right now. So I'm not worried about like that little part that goes in there too much. Um, we'll get into the detail a little bit later. We're looking at the big, the big shapes now. <clears throat> so then what's going on over here? I've got, look at this, another big, beautiful triangle right there. That's going to help me sort this out. So I'm going to just put that right in. Um, and I'm not worrying about all that little fussy stuff in there right now. I want to get in these shapes see this one's coming flipping over and then this one straight back and it's a bit irregular which is nice gives gives everything a little interest with, with irregular shapes so now I'll, I'll go back a little and, and see what's going on back here it's easy to see these shapes, right? But what can help you as well is to look at these negative shapes. Can you see what I'm doing? Maybe not. Yeah, I'm gonna zoom, I'm gonna lift up too a little bit on the. There we go. Sure. A moment while I turn the air conditioner down. <laughs> it's a little hot. Um, okay, first one or second one, fluid acrylics. Yes, you still need to do, use water in this stage, um, Yvonne, because it's they're still not watery enough for this layer. Um, 
with heavy body though, you're right, you'll have to add even more um, water to get it to this uh, viscosity. And what was the other question? Uh, she's just asking about brush sizes. Oh yeah, this, uh, the two brushes that I recommend are um, on my website for beginners. Um, it, they're Scholastic Wonder Whites and they're size 12 and 20 and um, they're Brights. And I know that's a terribly confusing name and it, it means that it's a flat brush that has, is, is, has a little bit shorter part here than longer. I kind of like a shorter area here. Um, so it's, and, and you can link to it um, on my supply page on my website. Yeah, I'm actually copying it right now. I'm going to post it in the comments. Oh, good. Okay. So that's great for beginners, and, and they're very reasonably priced. I think one's like $4, one's $7. Um, once you get a little bit more where you want even better brushes, uh, I think I have a couple of other recommendations on there as well. <clears throat> the brush I'm using right now is a is a silver brush. You'd never know it though because it's all covered up, right? But the important things you keep you keep. Oh, okay. Okay, we'll do. Uh, maybe that's too much though, huh? Well, it looks a little bit more zoomed in on your screen, so if it's just cupping the edges, it's probably good on our Can you see, can you see my finger though? At the bottom of the canvas? It's got a little delay, I have to wait. No, I don't think you can. Yeah, okay. We're gonna we're gonna come out again a little bit more. Sorry folks. But this is yeah, so intricate with all these little, little layers and uh, pieces here that we need to zoom low. Yeah. Um, and I might have to just take my glove off because it's not it's not not working for me. There we go. Too much. All right, I think that's as good as I'm gonna get it. All right, I'll see you in a second. Okay. We'll all see you in a second. Yeah, this is a really, um, this is a very important part of the painting because you wanna spend time getting it built, you know, giving yourself a skeleton to build on, so to speak, um, giving yourself cues and direction on where to go next. So you want to get this right. Um, not to say that you can't change things down the road, but we want to make it as easy as possible for us, right? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, you know what I'm gonna do then? I'm going to start to, um, I'm gonna squeeze out a little of my qu quinacrino magenta, and I'm gonna start to put in a wash of um, color on, on, on some of these middle values, and, and that will help to delineate the shapes a little bit more, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. All right. Okay, so since I'm doing this, uh, and why don't we just stick with this top half right now? Let's be, since, since you're right, everything's very intricate. We want to make sure we're all, we're all on the same page. And so I've got my magenta and it's kind of mixing up with my yellow and red on there. And I'm just kind of layering in some color 
in this area here, and even back here. Because back here, we're not, you know, there's petals, but we're not sure really what's, what's going on too much. Um, there's a little lighter petal there, but it's still mid-value. I'm going around, I'm looking at these negative shapes. Look at this great negative shape up here. This will help, help you to get the positive shapes right. I'm painting around all those positive shapes right now. And maybe I'm, you know, painting a little too much. You know, it, we'll, we'll definitely adjust it as we go. But um, I, th I think this is, is this giving you a little bit more idea of, of how I'm um, thinking about this? So we've got some beautiful, brilliant yellow in this, this, this center here. And I don't want to totally cover up the area without putting that in. So I'm going to squeeze out a little bit more of my Indian yellow and, and drop some of that in. And this would be usually things that I do on that second phase, you know, after I've dr drawn it all in. But I, I, we're going to, you know, stop and just kind of do this part right now. And it's okay if it mixes together. In fact, it's great, you know, at this, at this point, you don't want anything to be too done. And that middle part really needs to be dark. It is, and it, it might be hard to get it dark. So I'm gonna go in there with some straight quinacrino magenta and put in my shape. And, and you know, you could always, this is uh, acrylic, so you can always put things in later, right? But I really love to have a lot of this first layer kind of showing in, in, in my final painting, uh, I just think it's so pretty. So I like to um, kind of get pretty close so that I don't have to cover it all up with darker, darker uh, paint. I can leave some of that and it's the right value. That's the important thing. You see, I just put in some uh, red on top of that magenta and it's playing very nicely. And giving me a nice um, because if you look at the photo it's 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 I mean you could call that center purple you could call it a green even um, I think it's working best for me keeping it this dark magenta and then it has some orangey red pops of, of color in there that I just kind of put in so in looking at what we've got going on up here I see those shapes that are lighter popping out at me. Let's go down here and finish up this one. So I'm going back to my really watercolory mixture. See what I got going on. And because this is a big shape, this is a big light shape. So that's going to be a good part of our painting here. Look at this negative shape you got going right here. That, that's really gonna be helpful in helping you to get this, this light shape correct. If you, and it's like a triangle. I mean, I always, I always think of breaking things down into its simplest form. And, and that's the way that you can paint and draw complicated things is by breaking it down. So look, I've got that triangle in there now, and look, it just made that 
beautiful little part of that big big blossom. That seems to be about the right size for what I have going on in here. Um, I'm going to draw in that little shape. I'm looking at it positively now, not, not negatively. Um, kind of goes right to that, this part here. And then there's that, there's this petal that comes out and it's right along the edge and it kind of flips up. So we'll have to make that a little lighter value right in there to try to indicate that it's flipping up. And then there's this light, lighter kind of a, but not real light, this is still middle value, poking out down here. And then we've got this guy here that's providing a very nice little perpendicular to the vertical right there um, and adds some interest. There's even another petal under it and I don't know if I want or need that but I'll just stick a little reminder in in case we do and then I'll do the same thing that I did when we were um, when we were up here. So uh, got my magenta watering it down a little bit and then I'm going to put in this this pretty mid value around my shape. How are you doing on time just? Okay. So well, if anyone has any questions, now would be a great time. And uh, I don't know how you want to handle it after I'm gone. Uh, it might be good to just every so one often when you think of it, swipe those comments back into focus and see if you can take a second to answer some. Sure. Uh, but that's up to you. Yeah. I don't know why I don't want to mess your flow up. <laughs> well, yeah, so I do get in a flow, so I'll have to remember um, to do that. And if not, you know, you can be assured that I certainly will get back to you later today with any questions. But I am so thankful for your help um, get, getting us going, Just. Absolutely, of course. Happy to be here. All right. Have a good day. All right, y'all too. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Love you. Love you. All right, look at that. This is a great little shape in here. And it's, um, so now I'm looking at it negatively, I'm looking at that dark area and how it's kind of going around the petal. And it draws, look, it draws itself for you almost. It's like magic. Then this is a great one because what's going on here is that this is coming around like that. So we've got the dark inside of this. Kind of right there, right? And then this positive shape right there. Now there's another little petal sticking in there as well. So that's why I, I left that little shape in there but everything out here now is middle value so i'm gonna paint over it oh no except over there so let's finish that first look at this this tells you this little diamond here what's going on right so um paint in that diamond and then you've got your positive shape around it. And then the, here's a nice little um, petal that's flipping up right there. But now I can go in and, and just get rid of all that so that hopefully you can see what's going on.
and hopefully it's not too much of a, um, of a mess. I, I can see, I can see what's going on. Look, I've got my lights, I've got my dark, dark, and I've got my middle value. So this is what you want at this stage. This is gonna help you to build on it and put those final colors in. Um, I'm, I'm probably not as dark as I need, even uh, in here. While this is still a little wet, I'm just gonna lay in a little bit more. Uh, and I'm staying pretty high in chroma, which means I'm I haven't I'm using a pure color. Uh, it's very in intense. Uh, let me show you what happens if I add a little bit of. Um, now, I didn't tell you I was using this one, but I do use it sometimes, this phthalo green. I'm just gonna just put a little dot on my palette, and I, want, I just wanna show you what happens when you mix the um, magenta with just a touch of phthalo, and you get a real, I mean, just a touch, not even, uh, it, it just is so strong, and it'll turn it purple but I want it mostly magenta, so I'm gonna even put a little more magenta, but it will, it will decrease the chroma. It will give you a darker color in here. So see the difference, look at that. That's more really like the uh, photo, isn't it? That's really more like what's going on. So I wanna keep some of that fresh color in there, even though most of it is this darker color. Um, just because I like it, but I, I want to be genuine in, in my values because that's when the painting reads correctly, when you've got those values right. And um, you could pretty much use any color if you've got your values right. I know that you all probably hear me say a lot of the same things every time, every time, but, um, but it's true. <clears throat> so we'll, we'll, we'll go back in there again later, but I'm going to, I'm going to leave that for now. Okay. And think about my next layer. So my next layer, we've been working with the transparent colors. We've got our watercolor here and now we can start thinking about layering it in more opaque colors. And I, I like to start with the darkest darks, um, but that's this area right here. So let's let that dry and see what's going on there. And, and think about the more of the middle values now. Now, if you look at the photo, there are, there's a slight range in the middle values, um, but it, it doesn't need to be, um, you know, you don't, it, it, they could be all the same value and it would still work. Um, so what I'm saying is don't, <clears throat> don't get too concerned um, about, like on this petal, the, the, the side here is light. So that's a, a that's a personal preference. If you wanna you know, really make it more realistic and, and um, you, know, you, can, you can spend a little more detail in there. Um, I'm, I'm still going for the big colors and big shapes. So I'm going to squirt out some of my magenta, some of my red and some white. Um, you can use white, titanium white, you can use, um, what I'm using is gesso today, white gesso. Don't use zinc white because zinc white is more transparent. And um, I mean, that might be okay for, for some of the leaves, but you definitely want the opaqueness on these light um, areas. I never use zinc white. Um, 
I think a lot of portrait artists might like Think White. I've, that's what I've read because of that layering quality of, of the transparency and getting you know, skin tones and things like that. Okay, so I'm gonna mix up mostly color with a little bit of white in there. And, and start from there, maybe a little more. So this is a lovely cool pink. Then I'm gonna do the same for my red and it'll be a warmer shade of pink and we can determine where we wanna use each of them in the painting. And it's really just for getting a variety of color. They're going to be the same value. So if you have large areas that are the same value, it's good to break them up with different colors. Or, or just even slight variations of the same color. Yeah, I think it's too dark. I'm still mix keep mixing in there oh you know what i'm going to go to my bigger brush at this time so this brush is more like the the 20 that i was telling you about before <clears throat> and i think this is a a silver brush as well So I've got kind of a little lighter and a little darker because I don't know what's going to work yet. And like we said, some areas are slightly lighter and darker, but we want about the same value. And um, so I'm looking at the color right now and I see that these over here a little more purpley. So I definitely want to use the magenta there and the, and the darker mixture of magenta that I have. It's good to spend a lot of time looking and mixing before painting. Okay. All right, so um, start. And I feel like I need a little water in it. Hmm. Wasn't quite the color I wanted. darkening that up just a little bit. And you notice I didn't really finish that one because I want to get this color over here a little bit. And then I'm going to um, go a little slightly lighter on the sides here. And over here, I'm just going to put a little line because that's got the little edge kind of flipping over. Yeah. Go back to my darker mixture. Over here. Now, what I didn't leave room for in this painting was any of the background to peek through. So I definitely want to put a little bit of the background color in there. 
but I really don't have room for it anywhere else in this particular painting. As we remember, I, I folded it in on the side, so it's a little bit smaller than what we're looking at on the uh, color screen. I just switched the color a little bit there to the to the red and white pink. So more to that one. And I want to put myself a little reminder right there that there's a little edge. I'll need a little lightness there. Okay, back to my, I'm going to clean my brush back to my darker magenta and white color. And um, for you beginners, I know that there's some of you out there that are new to painting. Um, this is not, this is not easy stuff. And um, what it, it's and, and what I'm doing um, in Facebook Lives right here is a lot more in depth than what I ever did in my in-person classes at Chroma because in there I was popping in to see what all the students were doing often so I was kind of running back between the painting and, and their paintings and here I'm really just focused on what's going on um, on my canvas and it's allowing me to give you all a lot more information than I, I could. And so the, the, the classes at Chroma were a lot simpler. Um, and these have a lot more information about what I'm thinking and and, and the process. So I want for you guys the, who are who are new to really be be gentle with yourself. Don't be too harsh in in trying to make um, a masterpiece. This is practice. And um, what you should be taking away from this is the the basics. You know. The, the, the basic things, the, the basic process that I'm talking about as I'm painting. You know, how I'm, I'm drawing it on there in the beginning and, and, and how I'm thinking about the shapes and the values. And that's what is really important, um, you know, for all of us, but I mean, especially for, for beginners. Just switch the color a little bit up here so we get a little delineation of these. Petals. It's easy to let the two colors mix together and kind of make a third. So I'm, I'm wiping my brush a lot. To try to keep them a little separate. Now think about um, going down, kind of around these a little bit. I want to come back to this one. I kind of didn't really put that. I didn't paint that. And then 
these edges were a little lighter. Kind of lost this see painting wet and wet here so I'm really losing that edge there and um, that might work or it might not we'll see Take some straight um, magenta in here a little bit, see what happens. I see some dark areas back here that are that I want to just kind of get in with that. It's very, it's pretty similar to that color. Right. This is a tricky area. Still looking at my shapes. What's going on? Got those two light shapes going down in here. Now, um, now I'm going to go into my more opaque mixture right there and and. Paint in there a little bit. Just doing a little kind of wet and wet painting in here. Looking at the where the dark, dark shapes are. And then there's um stand back and have a look and see what's going on. Okay. Well, <clears throat> those those lighter values are popping out at me and that's a good thing. That's that's what I want. So it's a it's a good start. Alright, I've got all this kind of blocked in a little bit and I can start to kind of go into here a little. Let's start with this big shape because that'll be easy to kind of get get on there and then there's a little big a big shape right there and I'm going to um, use it's a little little warmer so I'm going to use the red and white pink mixture. How did I get my little brush again? Back to the big brush. You always use as big a brush as you, you feel comfortable with. And if you like to paint loose and impressionistically, you, 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 you certainly want to stick with a larger brush. Kind of thinking about those little stripes in there. You're painting around the darker areas right now. I mean the lighter areas, sorry. 
and around these lighter areas. And I'm not getting into this too much yet. I will in a second. This kind of down here. Okay, I think I need a. All right, I'm going to go back and put in a little paint here, a little the the darker magenta. Because there's this little flippy petal and then there's one below it which is in the dark and then it just has a little flippy area there too. Back to that warmer pink. I'm feeling a little orange in that area. Let me mix a little red and, and yellow. I'm gonna squirt that one out for the first time and um, mix up a little orange with these two. The pretty orange. Oh yeah, I think that that adds a nice little bit of color in here, like that. I'm using my drips. Um, they happened, so I'm, I'm painting around them. We're gonna bring that orangey bit in here. That's so pretty. And up there, a little bit. See how the Change in, in color really adds to the painting. Okay. Uh, I'm going into my magenta and white a little here. And what I want to do now is I kind of want to go into this yellow a little bit and <clears throat> make some negative kind of shapes because these petals are all, you know, they're all going down into there. They don't stop right there just because the, um, of the little yellow parts, right? So rather than just paint that yellow on top, um, I'm gonna try to, imply a little what's going on negatively. Now, we certainly need much more yellow than this, right? So we'll be putting more yellow on top of it. This will be just a little start.
there's a great little shape. Is that it? No, that's that up there that I lost here that I want to bring back. I'll bring that back later when we do the lighter colors. But what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of going through and making sure I've got my darks in where they need to be so that when I do paint my lights in there now, they have something to kind of pop against. Mm-hmm. I lost a little edge there too of that one. Okay. All right, it's it's to a, a good point. I'm gonna stand back once again and then you know what? If you have any questions, I will comment and, and I will um check right now before we move on to painting the, the lighter parts. Yeah, it's coming along. There we go. What's the difference in fluid and, and regular? Melanie says, um, this is a tube of, it doesn't say heavy body, does it? But it is. So it's gonna squirt out a little bit um, thicker than the fluid. And, um, the fluid is just what it says, a little more fluid. They both have the same pigmentation. So you might think, oh, I'm gonna get less of the color by using you know, this one, but you don't. This is, is, is just as strong, just as pigmented as the heavy body. Um, it's just really a personal, a personal choice. Um, and I'm not sure I'm seeing all of your comments. I'm scrolling around. There we go. Good, well, we'll continue. And if I missed you, I'm sorry. We'll, I'll get back to you later. And you know what, now that I think of it, Justin, you did ask me that question earlier about the fluid acrylic, so I guess I was pulling up some older questions on there, but, but that's okay. Um, we'll continue. So now, this is exciting, right? Because we are going to paint those lighter parts on there, those lighter petals, and, and they're just the edges of, of the petals. We're gonna paint those shapes that we see, and then hopefully it'll just pop, pop off the page. So I'm gonna get um, another palette and, um, with more white. And we're going to keep it simple because I don't see a lot of color variation in the, these lighter areas. I'm just going to simply mix up some white and uh, do I want to use, which, which pink do I want? I want a light pink. Do I want the magenta or the, or the red? Hmm. I'm thinking the red because I've got a lot of cool magenta going around here. So if we use the red, it will be, it will be a nice balance. So I've got, that's too much probably. I'm going to take half of that 
and mix a bit of red into it. And I'll leave the other half there in case I want to mix up something else. Um, so just use a wee bit of red at first because um, you don't want to have to add more white. I'm getting a, a really light, a light pink here. And actually, you're probably going to be able to go a little darker than you think because, you know, that middle value is so dark. Everything's relative, right? We, um, it's going to look, you know, if, look, watch this. You put that there and it's surrounded by white and it, it looks, can you even see it? Hardly, right? But then you put it down here and wow, you know, it just kind of is, it just pops next to this darker dark. So it's, it's all a bit relative. Um, you know what I, I think I'd like to, in addition to this little pile of pink, I'm going to steal some of it and throw a little bit of yellow in there, just a little, little bit for a slight variation on color. I know I, know I said I was just going to use the one, but now I'm feeling that I want a little different because, you know, it's the artist's prerogative, I guess. So now I've got one that is um, a little, yeah, that's pretty. I don't know if you could see the difference in them. That's the one I put yellow in. And, you know, maybe we do, maybe we do the edges with this, this yellowy color. If you see the edges here. Now think about beautiful shapes, right? And, and, and the edges being jagged. They're not straight. That's why I'm not going like this. I'm not, I'm not painting it like this. I'm painting it with the, the flow kind of of the, of the petal. So it does get a little bit darker as you go to the back. Maybe I'll, I'll switch then to that other pink back there. See how that goes. And you can paint over things. So remember this was the inside of the petal and then it was kind of coming out like that. Oops, a little blendy action going. Yeah. So hopefully that will read like it's kind of flipping over. Um, I'll try to smooth it out. I've got some lines in there. All right, one, one and done. <laughs> Let's keep going. Um, this, remember this nice pretty triangle shape in here. Slightly irregular, which is flower-like, right? Then um, let's do this one. Uh, I'm gonna do the edges first with my little yellowy and a yellow pinky color. Yeah, that's a little wet in there, right? So be careful. I don't want to. I don't want to blend. And so you can make little. You see how that's almost kind of like a straight line, but it's really very lovely and curvy. So I want to get into on top of this dark area with some 
little bits that are poking over, right? And if it doesn't cover in one swoop, we might have to wait for it to dry and try it again. We've got a nice little shape going out there. Yep. Yeah. This is see. This was the problem I was having with the um. The uh, open acrylics where it was staying wet and blending a little bit were in areas that I didn't want to. Remember I, I lost that nice circle -y kind of a shape up here. I'm going to try to put it in. Ooh, that looks good. Mm. Now, I'm going to take my little brush <clears throat> while I, I'm, I'm noticing this. I don't want to not do it now because I might forget about it and go around this with this dark. Yeah. See how then that, that kind of brings that out there. And, uh, the bottom here, I'm going to go a little darker. I'm using the um, as too dark. So, but it is a little bit, a little bit darker here at the bottom. And I uh, want to kind of blend that up into the top part. Well, we might have to go a little darker there. We'll see. Or, I mean, a little lighter. Okay, I'm um, going to wash my brush out and then go back into the really, the lighter color of pink and yellow. And kind of work into it a little bit. See, I don't want to lose that nice shape. I want to be very cautious of going around that. That's good for now. And let's continue around this inner part. 
because that's the, the lightest of the shapes. And while I've got that on my, my brush, remember the nice varied edges here. And I'll have to do the same thing that I kind of did over here. So I'll, I'll, I'll do that now while I'm still had it fresh in my, my head to go back into this middle color a little bit and delineate uh, what's going on here. A little bit. There's even a little, little peaky petal back there. Kind of one here too. Probably not standing back often enough because this is a subject that is going to look best from far away because you know up close it, it, we're seeing all the shapes and But far away, it'll all come together a little bit more. So I don't wouldn't say it look best far away. It's just it's gonna it's gonna look more like what it's supposed to, more cohesive as a as a flower. So I'm back in my light palette here with this little shape. And this one has a really lovely little break in it right there. Something like that. Oops, it's kind of dark, dark huh? Okay, I'm moving on. Um, and I might want to, do I want to go to my little brush now? Nah, we'll stick with the big one. You can go to your little one if, you, if you'd like. This is getting, feeling like you're not able to make these shapes like you want. <laughs> I did something inadvertently. Look, I, I made this and that the same. So it, it just sticks out in my, in my head. When I look at it, I want to make it different there. It's not so matchy.
Okay. This one back here, remember I lost a little bit of it. So I'm gonna get it back right there. really wet right there, so be careful. That's kind of a nice area there. I'll leave that. And I'm gonna go into my darker pink. pink. I was in that one. Now I'm in up here to do the, the back side of this. That's not dark enough. I'm gonna have to come on top of that with some more of that light color, but we'll see. We haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> Getting distracted. Okay, so like that. Right, let's let's continue up here with because we've got these nice light colors up here and 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 I'm just, I'm looking at, you know, the, the, the light shapes on the edges. And that's how I'm, I'm painting these petals. I'm, I'm not painting them as a, as a petal, as you see. I'm really breaking them up into the values and painting them that way. And in doing so, you, you know, it becomes a flower. In fact, one day, this was, I don't know, maybe about three or four years ago, I remember I was in my studio and I was painting a flower. And, and it probably was a peony because it had these little flippy edges on it. And I was determined you know at that point i was really studying a lot about value and 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 i was looking at the shapes and not looking at the petals per se and i left the room for a minute probably went to get lunch or something and um came back into the room, I remember. It was uh, a studio in my house at the time, and I gasped. I was, I, I was just like, oh, oh my goodness. You know, it was, it was a flower, and it, was, it had the most beautiful flipped edge. And I thought to myself, my, oh, I, I, don't, I don't remember painting that, you know? And I didn't, I didn't paint it that, uh, the a petal with a flipped edge, I was painting shapes. But it, it stuck with me. It was such a lesson that, you know, painting the shapes is, is just the way to go. Um, it gets you to your end that you want if you paint shapes, not things. Um, 
And it was when I really felt like I started to see, you know, like an artist. And that is a really cool thing when you, when you start to see the world through an artist's eye. Um, it really gives you a lot of confidence to go at your painting because you know, you know you can see. All right, um, I think I'm gonna get a little bit of the magenta and um, mix it in here with my, the pink that I had been using to go down into here a little bit because I don't think I wanna make this area as focal as we've made this right this is our, our our focal point this is if you squint you know it's a little bit less value than than this it's more like this area of the back of the petals and so i don't want this to pop as much so i'm, I'm darkening up my white and i'm using that cooler cooler color to put this lighter edge it is lighter but I don't want it to be as prominent as what I just put on. Needed a little darkness back there. I didn't paint that one. Okay, so now we'll paint that and that. I'm going to stand back. right so this is kind of a little darker area isn't it i like that shape that it made there so I'm going to leave that and I'm, then I'm going to go on top with the real light white with a little bit of, of yellow and pink in it. The same that I put in the really light areas here. I'm going to put on the tips here. And you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm looking at my color photo and my black and white, but mostly I'm looking at my color one now every before every stroke I'm 
Yeah, got a little mixing going on there. Now this one down here, I, I want to be maybe like that as well. I don't want it to be a prominent. Maybe a little lighter. Working on the shape now. Kind of. That's very light. I think once this dries, I'm gonna come back and just put a little bit of highlight on just the tips, maybe here and, and here and <clears throat> in different little areas. Um, all right, so now I've got paint on all of my light areas. We have a still a, a little area here that does not have any paint, so. I'm going to just see how it looks with a little bit of background color put in there and um, it will be a new color, a new addition to the painting. So maybe we'll have to throw a little color in there somewhere else of that, that same color. Sorry about that. I just hit it. So I'm going to use, um, a little white with a little manganese blue. Have not used that yet. For those of you that are working with the uh, set, just put a, a little touch of that phthalo blue in there. And in the reference, this is a really dark value back there. It's as dark as the middle, but I don't want to. Um, I don't really want to make it that dark. I. I don't think that that we need to, I think it's enough maybe that it's a little different color. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That might imply maybe that there's a little peeking through Right there. Maybe a little little bit up there. Well, let's just leave it for now. And uh, it'll tell us later if it needs needs some work when things are a little farther along. And we are pretty far along actually. We we probably could finish this up uh, pretty pretty quickly. Uh, with some final final touches um, because now I want to go in into the middle and work it a little bit and uh, bring that out so do I feel this is dark enough I probably could use a little bit more dark in there but I think I'm going to add in that yellow first and see, see how that goes. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to squirt out some of the um, Indian yellow and my other yellow, whichever one you have, the, the Hansa or the, the one that starts with the B. Um, or any bright yellow. So really a, a bright yellow and a mustardy yellow. <clears throat> the, this is a, a transparent color. This Indian yellow is really one of my favorites. And then this one is, is a little bit more opaque. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay real watery almost 
with um, a little bit of my Indian and go up in here and uh, just lay it in there a little bit. And I love Indian yellow because it just brightens up things in a, in a really pretty way. Since it's transparent, it, it just goes over what you have under it and um, it's really, really pretty. And, and I'm just making some general shapes here. And then what I'll do is I'll come on top of it with that real bright, bright yellow. So I'm just kind of going to give it a little depth here with, with this with this yellow. So you really can't see it over that dark part. We need the, uh, the real bright, the opaque one to go over it. And, and notice how I'm not, I'm not fussing too much about all those. I mean, we know that they're coming they're straight out. They're sticky like, but, but you know, you want to kind of have things implied a little bit. We don't want to paint every one of those little, little things. I forget what it's, they're called. I know one of you probably know one of my gardener friends. Pretty, that, see how that brightened up that middle area? I just, I love it. Um, now, there's no yellow anywhere else in the painting and um, there, that might be very nice to have a little bit somewhere else. I'd see a little bit peeking through here. Let's put a little there. Put some touches of yellow. Warms things up a little bit. Keep it up into your this is the time that it's okay to get a little fussy in your painting this is the end so you're able to put little dip dots and dashes and things or at least I like to at this point I don't, certainly don't want to do that before it gets to this point um, now I'm going to mix up um, a bit of white with that yeah, with that bright yellow, because um, I think I wanted a little, just a little lighter in value even to really, really pop when I put it in there. And and uh, so I'm standing pretty far back from my canvas, and I'm holding my my brush out straight with my arm like this, so I get a really nice view far away. And that was kind of a more of a blob than I wanted. Wanted a, a little bit more of a. But I don't want to get too spotty. You know what I mean? I still am thinking of my big shapes, even in this point that we're putting these final touches on. I want to imply, I want to imply like impression, making impressions. Um, I want to imply what's going on. I don't want to paint every single one. Now we can get in this, this part here a little where best it's 
you, you want to make different kind of shapes. With your brush, that got a little blobby too. Could even you can even try to imply some of those stems. I know they're not stems, but you know what I mean. It really, it does come into into the middle here a little bit, doesn't it? Is that enough? Hmm. Bring that shape together a little. Back to uh, maybe just a few little, a touch of that orange. Remember when we put that real pretty orange in there? Let's, let's put another little spot of it. I just mixed together the bright yellow and the, um, and the red. Let's just see if we can put some orange. Yeah, I mean, I even see some kind of going up into here. We're making pretty good time today. I see it's 1141. All right, I don't want to get too carried away, do I? So, I'll stop. Oh, but maybe, let's see what happens if we put one in the middle. It might not be opaque enough now. It's not really. Yeah. Okay, um, back to the very light yellowy, not yellowy, but it does have a little yellow in it, the pink, the lightest pink with the touch of yellow in it, back to this palette. And um, now is, is kind of a fun part where I do, uh, once again, I'm kind of standing back and I'm looking at those edges and, and all that, the, the little nuances of maybe the, um, the petal shape. that you can, you can enhance, you know, a little bit. And yeah, I remember when I said I wanted to go back into some of them and just tip, tip off. Little things and this is where it gets that kind of, um, fluffy feeling, you know, of all the little bits sticking out. And I kind of make some up too, <laughs> like right there. Now I don't want, I don't want to focus, remember, down here too much. I'm not gonna, not gonna enhance that too much.
I have a little of that former color on there. I'm going to wash it off. It seems to be getting on, uh, getting on things. I don't want. This is a, a good area for really a nice contrast because um, you know it's the center of interest. You've got your strongest, brightest colors there against your lightest colors here. Now, if you in your in your painting, if you've got a little bit more of this, you know, there's lovely little areas out here that you can add highlights on the edge. Be careful with the, the very lightest light. You might want to use a little one that's not so strong. I mean, um, that's not as light, so it doesn't draw your attention. Yeah, mess that up a little. So I'm gonna go in and try to bring that out again. See how I was I was putting in those little dips and dots with the um, light color, and and now you can. You can do that with the darker color, with the magenta. And you can put in a little bit of candy <laughs> with that. You wanna there are some lines. You wanna add a little not too many. I I don't want that to be very prominent because I, I don't have well I do have some lines up there. So you can add some lines in if you want. Now, there were a little edge there. Now that I'm looking at it. And you know what, um, speaking of those lines up there, they're kind of drawing my eye now that I've, I've mentioned it and kind of noticed it. So I'm going to go and go in my yellow palette and go into the um, Indian yellow and um, 
just kind of go over that area, I think, a little bit and make it less prominent with those lines that are sticking out. They are like that. And, and we're, we're about done. I think, I think I'll think um, i definitely come and have a second look after lunch and, and see if there were any areas that, that I wanted to um, touch up or enhance or maybe something is glaringly wrong. If you see something wrong, let me know in the... Um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And uh, I look forward to seeing how your paintings turned out. Please post them in our private Facebook group, which is Chrome Community. I think we have about 80 members right now. And um, so it's, it's, uh, it's kind of still small. You can post or you can just pop in there and have a look and see what everybody else is doing. Um, thank you for joining me again today. I really appreciate it and I wish you lots of love.